Hello! In today's episode, we're going to do something a little differently. We're going to look at a local political issue that may not affect some of you, but stick with it because there are some overarching principles that you can still get from it. Notice the bar below. This is where you can jump straight to whichever argument you think sounds the most interesting. Otherwise, just stick with the video and we'll play through all of them. Enjoy! The issue at hand is the upcoming vote on the Yankton School District opt-out. Just this year, South Dakota's governor, Dennis Dugard, proposed a bill that would cut $127 million from the state's general fund, which is about 10%. The Arcus leader reported that virtually every corner of the state government would take part in the reset, including state aid to kindergarten through 12th grade education, higher education, and Medicaid providers. The Argus also reported that by decreasing state aid to education, Dugard said, his proposal reduces property taxes. But school districts might choose to hold opt-outs, which would keep property taxes for owners in those districts at their current levels. This is where we enter the story. The Yankton School District, feeling that the cuts were too severe, has decided to go for the opt-out. In this instance, not only will they keep property taxes at their current levels, they are actually going to increase property taxes for everyone in the Yankton County. A vote yes for the opt-out will increase property taxes to pay to the school's general fund. A vote no for the opt-out will keep property taxes the same and force the schools to make those tough cuts. That is the unbiased history of what has happened so far. Now we request just a few minutes of your time to explain a few reasons why we strongly urge you to vote no for the opt-out. The proponents of the opt-out have given a figure of what the tax increase will look like. A house that is worth $100,000 will only increase $198 a year. Some have argued that that would be like giving up a couple pizzas a month. Okay, but here's two very important things you need to consider. First, that estimate is on the low side. Most of Yankton's residences, houses, and properties are going to be worth more than $100,000 and are going to be charged a lot more than $198 per year, exception being maybe a mobile home. You also need to realize that there's a much bigger picture than your own individual circumstances. People who own businesses and business lands and all non-owner occupied properties are going to have tax increases of 39%. That's a whole lot more pizzas. And for the people who are only renting property and think, this will affect me, you need to realize that the people who own the land, the property, the apartments that you're renting, they're going to get hit with a 39% increase. They're not going to just sit back and eat that. Many of them are going to be forced to raise your rates. When you do your calculations and put on your $198 goggles, which you feel is reasonable for you, you need to remember that other people and businesses are going to be hit with a much higher rate and that means they're probably going to have to raise their prices. So those pizzas that we're all getting a whole lot less of are probably going to cost us a whole lot more. I hope you consider those price increases when you balance your budget to see if you can afford to vote yes on the opt-out. The opt-out is bad for businesses and therefore bad for the community. According to the Governor's Office of Economic Development, South Dakota's business climate is number one in the nation for entrepreneurs according to the Small Business Survival Index. Our overall tax burden is also the best in the country according to Forbes magazine and the Pacific Research Institute. Yankton has the opportunity to protect or destroy that reputation with the vote to raise taxes on commercial properties 39% through the proposed opt-out. Incoming businesses would supply needed jobs and boost our town economically. This would be exciting to see. Instead of all the empty buildings around the area, or the startup entrepreneurs who struggle, fail, and close shop like we've seen in the lake area, if businesses don't come to Yankton, then we're going to see more and more people leave Yankton to find jobs. And that means less enrollment in the school. Truly, Voting no for the opt-out is not voting no for the school. The proponents of the opt-out are using the phrase, vote yes for kids. This phrase is designed to prey on your emotions. Vote yes for kids? Which kids? Whose kids? We're not voting yes for the kids that are in private school or for the kids that homeschool. We're not voting yes for the kids and the families that will be pressured by this increase in tax burden. There are going to be kids that benefit from the opt-out. I'm not saying that there's not going to be. On either side of the issue, somebody's going to lose, and that's sad. 
But all I'm saying is that there's a lot more at stake than just those kids. There's other kids, there's families, there's businesses. All these things have to be taken into account. Goodness without wisdom always accomplishes evil. We must not let our emotions cloud our judgment. It's a hard choice, but we have to make it. Also, don't be afraid if someone calls you selfish for not wanting to fund the school. It's not selfish to want your own money. Hey, Jeff, uh, here's your pay for the week. Boy, it's a long week this week. Yeah, you certainly earned your pay. Excuse me, sir. I was wondering if you could donate some of that money. See, my kid's school's in desperate need of funding, and we're trying to raise support. Please, um, it's for his education. Oh, sure, I'd be happy to help. But wait, food bill, electricity. Here's what I could do. Ah, oh, thank you. This is just a, oh, so this isn't going to be enough. I mean, we're going to need at least 30% of your income. Hey, times are tough, man. I mean, everyone's got to share the burden. After all, it's, it's for the kids. What? I can't do that. I barely balanced my books last month. Oh, come on, Jeff. It's for the children. I just can't do it. Don't be selfish. Don't you support children? Don't you support education? I, I'm not being selfish. I earned this. I got bills to pay. It's your money and you have a right to it. It's not your fault if a teacher gets fired any more than it's your fault if a pizza delivery guy gets fired. You shouldn't feel bad just because you didn't buy more pizzas, and you shouldn't feel bad just because you're not giving more money to the school. By the way, if this opt-out passes, we're all going to be buying less pizzas. Sorry, delivery guy. Attendance to the public school has been on a steady decline for at least the last 10 years. Making cuts to teachers and programs is sad, but inevitable. Another very important thing to consider is this. The issue is not just a matter of whether we can join together as a community to foot the bill for the kids' activities in this time of need. If that were the only reason, then there would be a lot less resistance. There is a much deeper underlying issue going on here. If those who are currently spending money on their child's education through homeschool or private school are forced to pay large amounts of money in property tax to the public school, then that person may not be able to afford to educate their child through that method anymore and would have to rely on the free public school to teach his kids. The more that a citizen is forced to pay into the government programs like the public school, the more he becomes dependent on them. This cycle culminates with the government in total control and the citizens completely dependent. Although that final result may seem like a long ways away, it is certainly to come if we continue these sorts of trends. Forcing us to pay our money into these programs is giving the government more power and control, all under the guise of for the children. Let's be frank, education is not a right. Educational choices, however, are in fact a right. Remember what I said about businesses having to pay an increased 39% in property taxes due to the opt-out? Well, I wasn't just kidding around. I'm about to give you a personal testimony. Let's take my family's summer business, for example. This tax increase will force us to pay an additional $2,000 at least. This is on top of the property taxes that we already pay, and as it is, property taxes have gone up for us over the last few years. What profit we do make, our parents want to spend on the education and hobbies of their children, not to have to give it to some government entity who's going to spread it amongst the masses. We realize that some people will lose out if the opt-out doesn't pass, and we do care. We don't want to seem calloused about that. So, what's a good alternative to the opt-out? Well, we regularly see people and businesses contribute to school-sponsored events like the prom, let supporters of the opt-out voluntarily donate the money they would have been forced to pay, if they believe in the school programs and have such money. Some of us are unable to take such a financial hit. Some who would be forced to pay 200 could maybe afford to pay 2000 while others who would be forced to pay 2000 could barely afford to pay 200 I think we'd all like to opt out of forced contributions to any entity. There is no worse tyranny than to force a man to pay for what he does not want merely because you think it would be good for him. Whether you agree with any, none, or all of our arguments, allow me one more point. The budget cuts may be sad, 
but losing a teacher or program does not necessarily mean losing an opportunity. Necessity is the mother of invention. For all we know, the school's budget cuts might be just what the school needs. Perhaps this will be the force that causes parents to get more involved in their child's education. Perhaps dads will want to band together and coach basketball teams with their kids instead of paying a coach to do it. Do you think that sounds crazy? Well, I know an exceptional movie that's coming out later this year that's about that very same thing. Check that out later. The fact of the matter is, the school will survive, and the kids that attend there will survive, and we won't put an undue burden on our economical growth. It might be difficult for some kids at first, but strength comes through adversity. We want to give our kids the best, but we shouldn't handicap them by making their lives too easy. In all reality, the kids and the parents may grow a whole lot more through this. And really, isn't that what school's all about?